Welcome to another Strange Brew Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tomcat, a.k.a. Tom Thompson. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. And who else is joining me on this cold, snowy Russian day? I don't know if the day <laughs> Another is one of your doofy-ass hosts, Reverend Kaiju. Did you call yourself Doofy? <laughs> doofy, yes. Like that <laughs> wonderful officer from the scary movies. <laughs> My favorite. All right, who else do we have? Uh, I guess I'm back to Horror Boy again. Christmas is over, New Year's is over. Yep. I need to come up with something better than Horror Boy, though. The Irishman? Do we just, like, like, carry on? Everyone's going to think that you're that weird fucking Scorsese film if you just call yourself the Irishman. We'll think of something. We'll we'll, we'll make something happen. It's always such a letdown. Like, it's like, why don't I? Why don't you just name yourself after, like, some serial killer or something like that? What was uh what was the the boxer Jimmy brother's Savile. name in Death of Smoochie? <laughs> the what? Oh, I'm Scooter. You're <laughs> Smoochie. So stupid. All right, welcome back to the show. We have me joined by me, uh, Anton and Aaron. It's a little early morning, so to speak. Um, I got coffee. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Delicious pistachio coffee. Um, there's a warning at the top of this episode. Uh, Anton's going to help me uh, pronounce Russian words because I watched a bunch of stuff and I still couldn't pronounce them. And by help, he means I'm just going to say them. Yeah, because it's, uh, the you know, uh, my one weakness in in, in the world um, is, is trying to pronounce last names especially. <laughs> one weakness, only one. Yeah, one weakness. Yeah, otherwise perfect. Yeah, pretty much. That's what my mom says. She says you're perfect in every way. And I'm like, thanks, mom. And then uh, she fucking kicks me in the face. <laughs> like my new toy. What is that? Is that a it's weed a, vape? It's a dry herb vape. Yeah. I used to have a Snoop Dogg one I liked. Um, they, you got to keep care of them where they do not last that long. But welcome back, everybody. We are talking about Dyatlov Pass. Um, the Dyatlov Pass incident. Dyatlov. So so essentially, this is going to be like a two-parter. We're going to get into this. The main what happened. Really, and then the second part, we're going to talk about some of the theories uh, behind what we think happened because there is a lot. It's been over 60 years, I think, at this point, and nobody, you know, they don't really have answers. People claim they do. Um, I watch videos of a guy that thinks he has definitive proof, but then some of the ho- there's so many holes in his story. A lot of people assume and think they know what happened, but nobody was really there. And uh, other than the people that died, so mm-hmm. we don't really know what actually happened. What do you guys know or have heard about or like when did you really first hear about this? For me, I, I actually don't know if I first like started to look into it when that movie came out, to be honest. Um, oh, The Devil's Pass? Yeah, and like I think when I had seen like the whole based on a true story and then I kind of from there kind of dove into the real life story but i still never really it was always another one of those ones i feel like everybody's heard of but nobody really knows what it's about mm-hmm. yeah it's just yeah. kind of like oh yeah some people went missing and they're not really sure what happened to them and they died and this shit and that's kind of the extent of a lot of people's knowledge even when you look online a lot of the articles are just like very plain jane they don't really dive into like the full uh depth of the story it's just kind of like yeah, these people went to research something, died, don't really know, probably an avalanche. Yeah, well, so much of it his is, tongue was ripped out. So much of it is kept is because it was kept behind the Iron Curtain for as long as it was. I mean, it wasn't exactly during a period of um, cooperation between mm-hmm. the USSR and anyone that wasn't a part of the USSR. So yeah, I'm sure true. those files were probably classified and maybe even burned. You know, yeah. I, I think it's entirely possible that we'll never know what actually happened. Um uh, but it was Bigfoot. I'm going to come yeah. right out and say it right now. It was it, it was, was Yeti attack. It was, That's yeah, what it was Yeti. We'll be getting into it on the second part. Um, I feel like I probably heard about this from like some internet video when I was like, you know, just laying in bed at like 1 a.m. looking through scary videos. And I feel like that's when I probably heard about it. I would assume something like that because, you know, yeah. who, who doesn't do that? Who doesn't stay up to like super late looking at scary videos on the internet? All of our listeners do. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I think I think for me, it was probably in one of the, you know, the myriad of conspiracy books that I had when yeah. I was when I was younger um, in the 
weird happening. Like it's always in like the Bermuda Triangle section type thing where it's just like a weird ex expedition happens and some weird shit happens on that. And there's usually no survivors. Um, yeah, it's a this is a fucking strange case. And that is for sure. I've always wanted to cover this just because it is such a mystery. Nobody knows really. They don't really know what happened. Um, would you guys rather die in a very hot climate or a very cold climate? I think frozen would be easier because I think you just fall asleep. You just sit by the fire and eventually you're too cold and your body shuts down and you fall asleep. I think yeah. hot, you're going to sweat and dehydrate and go absolutely insane. Yeah, that's true. But you, can but also you, de you dehydrate in cold. in cold just as quickly yeah. as you do in heat. So, What do you think, Aaron? After hearing that, probably cold. Before yeah. that, I was like, Phew. probably equally as shit, but whichever one's just easier. Yeah, that's true. Because it sounds like uh, this would have been a f horrifying wherever they went through. And it is crazy that nobody survived. So you don't really know at all of like what kind of took place. And it, it the fact that it, it's so strange that I think uh, what, as far as I was listening to, like they found a couple bodies and then two months later found two more and shit like that. And it was kind of spread out. And, and a lot of different things were happened to these bodies, like bruises head trauma fucking cuts on their hands it's it's fucking weird either i way. mean the, the logical explanation for that would be the fact that they were found in different times some of which were found months later i mean yeah you know, it could be defensive wounds could be uh animals picking at the carcasses it could be any number of things um but you know again it was yeti so yeah let's, let's go to soviet russia in January 1959, nine young Soviet hikers died under mysterious circumstances while trekking through the Ural Mountains uh, in what's now known as uh, Dilatov Pass. And so Dil Dilat, God damn it. See? Already. <laughs> in Yakov genu Pass <laughs> incident. We need Yakov. to have like a little thing that goes like ding for every time that you mispronounce something. <laughs> I was actually, oh, we need a counter. Yes. Great. Absolutely. I feel uh, like that's the the true drinking game on Strange Brew is to fucking try to try you'll to die. You'll you'll go to the hospital. There's no um I'm also disappointed in you. You didn't have some fucking Soviet uh music right off the right off the go. Ah, uh, that would have been a great idea. Dun, Dropping dun, the ball. Dun. I know. <laughs> You're fucking man. it up, old man. Uh, I can't tell you. I was I've done fucking fucking God damn it, Anton! <laughs> can you can you guys give me uh, uh give me a, some Russian music? What do you think it sounds like? Little big. I don't know. That's just like, you can't you can't make that noise with your fucking mouth, man. <laughs> oh man! All right, so um, are you ready? Let's get into this. So. In January 1959, a 23-year-old hiker named Igor Ileskevich Dilatov led a journey to reach the peak of Orotin Mount, a mountain in the northern oodles of Soviet Russia. Oodles of noodles, man. That dude yep. looks like somebody that I know. Like, like Does he, he just, y yeah, yeah. He he looks a little bit like uh, this kid Marshall that I know. Oh, my we are uh, showing a picture of Igor, and that's a very Russian name. Uh, uh, is like what part Russian of name? Igor Ileskevich Dilatov sounds Russian to you? All of it. Every <laughs> single part of it. So the young man brought a team of eight experienced hikers, many from Euro Poly Tech Institution or Institute, uh, along with him for an adventure before he left uh, uh, Dyatlov, he, uh, had told his sports club that he and his team would send a telegram as soon as they returned. But the telegram was never sent. And none of the hikers um, of the so-called Dyatlov uh, Pass incident were ever seen alive again. They were taken by aliens. Okay, we got um, theories on the next one. <laughs> but It's uh, going to be I, so hard not to talk about theories. We just throw the little teasers out there. Yeah, that's, that's why I keep yes. saying Yeti. We're just getting into the incident. And... Uh, you know what? I don't know. I'm not a huge uh I'm not a huge fan of hiking in the fucking snow. I'm not a huge fan of the snow in general. And just trekking up a dangerous mountain sounds uh not fun. I prefer summer hikes because I mean, no matter what, even if you're hiking in the in the woods in the summer, it's gonna be colder because you have the canopy to cover you and it's mostly shade. But I mean winter hikes are nice if there's fresh snow and it's it's really I don't know. There's, there's always an excuse to hike somewhere, I think. I'm just not a fan of winter. 
You know, and it's been it. People blame global warming, right? Blah blah. But it's been it's been a nice winter up in Canada. We've got hit once pretty hard, uh, but it's kind of stayed a little even. Where it's just kind of cold, not too much snow, and uh, I like it. A global warming could happen. I'll be dead by the time it really gets bad, and my kids will have to deal with it, and I won't care because I'll be in fucking heaven or wherever I'll go. Hell, maybe I don't know somewhere like that. It's been a weird like time <laughs> in where where i'm at there's been a, there's been a lot of weird shit that that's gone down that doesn't normally go down well the blizzard's not really weird that i mean I, it was worse than 77 everyone yeah. is is quantifying it as worse than the storm which we use to judge all other storms so now it's gone from like oh it's blizzard of 77 now it's like that's eh, blizzard of 22 yeah, um, just just wait for uh for chemtrails and harp that me and billy will be doing and then we'll we will talk about all the conspiracies of weather so going to be exciting stuff so it, it is pretty crazy and when their bodies uh, were found in the coming weeks their strange and gruesome injuries left investigators baffled and repulsed some were missing eyes others were missing tongue i mean had a missing tongue and many were struck by a force um comparable to that of a speeding car and no one can make sense of it which is crazy like i mean the, the impact of the one guy's skull or some shit like that was like it was like he was in a car accident yeah he probably got hit in the head by a big fucking rock from the avalanche oh no yeti fucking swung him against a tree like he's jason hit one his... of them one of them died from an avalanche i'm gonna go ahead and say that yeah the, the, someone one of them caught a rock to the head from an avalanche but the rest of them were all yeti attacks Wow, look at that Nikolai's guy's ears, man. He can hear fucking reptilians fucking in space. He can hear you. To- Wait. <laughs> Same with He Yuri. can hear you right okay, now. Yuri, Yuri, yeah, they can, they can both hear you right now. In their fucking graves in the fucking snow. Because they, they, yeah, they took the bodies back. They examined them, um, which we will get to later because it is pretty crazy and gruesome. Um but it's just crazy that they're like, oh, like, let's have a uh, let's have a time of our life and go hunting up this fucking dangerous mountain. You reckon and, like, they were having like sex parties every night? There's, and the, I mean, they were drinking and stuff like that, too. Right. So and how do you keep each other warm? You slide something inside and it keeps everybody warm. Interesting. <laughs> Who ends up where is probably like what the whole day is based on. Yeah, it's true. Fucking like, uh, yeah, it's such a crazy like in from the weather, from what they say, it was dangerous, right? Like like howling winds, freezing cold temperatures. And it just doesn't seem like a fun time. I don't know if that's an adventure I would like to go on. To be fair, you don't you didn't grow up in a mountainous region of Soviet Russia. There's not much else to do. I guess. Yeah, but you can fight, fight a polar bear and lose every time. That seems like a that seems like a one a one time trial of trying to fight a polar bear. <laughs> I mean, I guess Dietlov is also down, a black trial. attack, white good night because they will fucking murder your ass. Yeah, polar bears are vicious. Yeah, so crazy. Don't want to fuck around with them, but Russians are nuts for like hanging out with with like bears and just like hugging them or tackling them or like drinking fucking vodka while the bear like gives him a back massage and it's like Eagle, your fucking back is so scratched up and he's like. It felt good in the moment. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so the Soviet government closed this case and offered only thin explanations, saying that the hikers died due to hypothermia because they were inexperienced and that maybe something like an avalanche was at fault. And they said um, there was one thing they said about the the case, and it was like um, a force of nature or something like that is like how they – just, oh, we don't know what this is. Like, it, it was a force of natural nature. It was something yeah, like insurance that. Insurance companies so, call that act of God because they don't want to pay you. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, it is. But, I do find it really strange, though, that, like, um, you know, there's, without getting too much, obviously, into the theories, I think the one everybody knows about is, like, that whole avalanche idea. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, it is really weird, though, if, the, if it is as clear cut as that, like, how many times this thing has been reopened and, like, re examined and, yeah it is very strange that it's like why does it seem so important in one sense if it is just like oh yeah no it's just probably an avalanche it's there's no basis to anything else i don't know it's just i I wouldn't want to be caught up in an avalanche either because that's fine but then it's like they would have i feel like they would have been more buried underneath the uh, but i don't know i'm not an expert you suffocate in an avalanche if you're buried under a bunch of stuff because it's it's the same thing as being buried in sand you're not going to be able to breathe yeah Okay, would you rather get trapped in uh, an avalanche where you you had like 
I don't know, equally chance of surviving, or would you rather um, go into like a sand pit, like um, uh, sinking sand? Uh, so, you, know, you know, apparently quicksand isn't quicksand. actually a lethal threat. Really? It's it's a fucking. Well, why in a princess myth? bride that he have to like he you know she was gonna die and he had to like jump in there and. Well, you're more likely to epic to, scene if you if you like <laughs> climb through like a swamp or something you're more likely yeah. to drown in that because the mud is just gonna continue to sink but like quicksand isn't really as. Or like you're just all yeah. you have to do is you lay down you treat it like the water you just lay back Weird. and your legs will come back up. From, from it looks scary in a princess bride especially that giant rat that was like gonna sniff them. Fucking eat their fucking eyes out. I love that shit. Rodents of a, uh, what is it? Rodents of unusual size. <laughs> yeah, I actually love that movie so much. Um, so yes, yeah, yes, you're very smart in a show. <laughs> uh, but there's no other, there's like literally no explanation. Um, you know, clearing up almost, um, none of the lingering questions. They just like it, nobody really fucking knows what's going on. Well, to, to your point you were making, Aaron, yeah, why, why, if it's yeah. just an avalanche, why exactly would you continue to reopen this? Like, what new will, no, what new information are you going to gain? Yeah. Yeah. And like, why, why are these people like, cause I'm sure there's been, shit tons of groups and people throughout history that have died on expeditions mm -hmm. yeah and this one seems to crop up again all the again. time because even like um uh everest it's crazy how many bodies are like the, up there and then they're like markers and stuff like that because we covered this a while ago and it's it is interesting because it's like for those people that live for the thrill of like adventure and 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 all that stuff and wanting to you know hike up mountains just to make uh be like i got here first you know what i mean like i i got to the top and uh i don't have that i don't have that thrill in life i don't really need to do that i don't need to jump out planes or climb mountains it's it doesn't get me hard i understand being a looking for bigfoot gets and me like hard, though. for adrenaline junkies and shit like that but yeah mountains i don't like, like i get like like the pride thing of being like i conquered this mountain or what have you or doing one of somebody that's that's never done it before but yeah the thing is with like everest and shit especially going up and coming down are just as dangerous yeah like, it, oh, it's not as though you get to the yeah. top and you're like oh man cool all that hard work is done it's an easy yeah, thing back. it's like come back it's down. like cool i made it to the top now i could also die just as fucking easily going down yeah I can climb up a ladder, but it's more dangerous coming back down. I hate heights. I'm not a so, fan. So do I. I'm not, are you not a fan of heights either? I just, it's, I will go on a roller coaster with you that, like, I will get, mm -hmm. like, Same. I'll scream the word fuck the entire time um, at the top of my lungs. But it's this idea that essentially that I can't control if I slip or something happens. You're just like, you could just die. Like, I just, just understand dead. that. I, I think my body is like, you're not supposed to be at this height. No. Like, what are you doing? Like, roller coasters are fine because I'm still sitting and I'm grounded. Yeah. But I can't. I, yeah. And you're you're right. Going down a ladder is way more terrifying <laughs> than going up it. How when I start moves? to feel like that as well, I uh, I think my mind and body both start to go, you're not really good at climbing. You're not really good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then I start to, like, feel like I'm about to slip and I can't climb anymore. I can't mm -hmm. move. How I'm many like, movies have you seen of dads idiot. just falling off ladders and hurting themselves because their son walks by with a paint can or something and hits the ladder <laughs> by accident? I actually <laughs> knew somebody who who fell off of a 25-foot ladder. Uh, Holy fuck. Yeah. So, like, the ladder was tilted towards the house, and it tilted uh, straight for a split second, and then it went out from, like, the front yard, and he flew out into the middle of the street. That's fucked. Did he survive? And survived with, Oh, like, my no God. With no crazy injuries, landed flat on his back. Oh, that would knock the fucking wind out of you was, too. Yeah, like was he, he was like drunk. Heart, he was like hurt a bit, but he didn't have any last. Well, yeah, was no, he, he drunk and he was trying to like walk on the ladder? That's, like that's not movies? no, that's that's not <laughs> that is not what I was going for. I was not making an Irish joke, nor was I. I'm saying was he drunk because like you know what they say that you're you're more loose. Yeah, and true, when your actually. body hits you don't like. He was an alcoholic, but I don't know if he was drunk at that point. If you're, I mean, if, it's a whole, if it's a home project and you're doing stuff and you are an alcoholic, then we can assume you're drunk. Yeah, you're probably drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you live in Ireland. Uh -huh. You can make you can make fun of Canada. I live in a fucking fascist uh, country, so where they're trying to ban Jordan Peterson and take away psychology fucking uh, <laughs> papers because uh, he said stuff against the government. So crazy. What a what a time to live in. But what, what? How? How do you not have the the opposite conspiracy theory that he very well may be a Russian asset because of the sheer amount of time that he spent in Russia getting uh, cured off of benzos, huh? 
Maybe. Answer me that, Batman. Everything is backwards. Everything is lies. I don't know what to believe in anymore. So, surprise. Mm-hmm. So what we should do is, like we talked about in a previous episode, we should all just kill ourselves. Don't <laughs> say that, man. Don't say that. Well, we I would talked li- about you said that in the I episode did not, not say that, that long ago. You said the whole world should come together and we all should just kill ourselves. That's not no no. I don't want some sort of cult rapture fucking shit going on. Can we do it like slowly and fun though, like with drugs instead of everyone um... needs to build a community. I, I well, I'm not going to get into this, but if I could, if I had the money and means to just buy up a bunch of land and then I just have all these like minded people. Okay, now it's starting to sound like a cult. Thomas, Ooh, Koresh. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm getting no, weird uh, vibes there. Uh, <laughs> real real close on that tiptoe there, bud. At, at, well, a place where everybody hates the government equally. We all grow our own fruits and vegetables. Everyone's on mushrooms dancing in the fucking woods. Uh, I dress someone up like a bear and then I light them on fire. It'll be like, <laughs> it'll be like everyone has to drink. You understand that this was tr- attempted <laughs> in the seventies and the sixties, and it just doesn't work, right? I'll I'll make it work, man. I'll put everyone at gunpoint, and if they don't drink the Kool Aid, then I'll shoot them with fucking AR-15s. <laughs> I'm not plugging another show, but I want to correct you so fucking badly right now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Flavor Aid? It, it was like, half not... Flavor Aid and half yes. Kool Aid. Let's get the fucking record. It's too straight. fucking cheap. Um, so they people have puzzled over this mystery for like s- over 60 years, which is like crazy. Um, and nobody seems to know why. And while Russia government did reopen the case in 2019, we still don't know what exactly happened on that snowy mountainside all those years ago, based on what was recovered from cameras and diaries discovered at the site of the hikers deaths. Investigators are able to piece together, um, on February 1st, the team began to make their way through the unnamed past at, uh, a Toraton, a Toraton, a Toraton. Sorry. <laughs> That's I would that it, w- it uh, wasn't in Ireland or, anyway. Oroton. I know that much. Oroton. Uh, Oroton. Oroton. Oh. Orton. As they pushed through the hostile climate towards the base of the mountain, they were hit with snowstorms that ripped through the narrow pass, decreasing visibility, causing the team to lose their sense of direction. And instead of moving towards a Torothin, they accidentally went the west, the opposite way, and found themselves on the slope of a nearby mountain. This mountain was known as Kuletsiel, meaning dead mountain in the language of the indigenous Mensi people of the region. Which is crazy. It was known as Dead Mountain. It's like, I would not go to anywhere that has the word death in it. You know what you I see, mean? I say that, right? But then at the same time, I think things like that fascinate me. Like, uh-huh. the idea of what they had done here fascinates me. Now, if you were to just drop me in that area, I'd probably shit my pants and just try and kill myself before I'd done anything. <laughs> but uh, I can, I guess, in a way, I can see, like, the even now probably the appeal especially since this has happened like the appeal for people to be like oh let's go to the fucking dead mountain and solve the mystery mm-hmm. yeah just like when you were screaming on the um live episode about going to that haunted house and you're like why Same wouldn't thing. you want to do it and i'm like it looks like it's torture it is torture which it's torture that's... at the hands of a fucking cia of a yeah. former a former spook so i want to do good. an episode of, of that on your show aaron or both your guys show because i it would be interesting to talk about contextually if, like just get into a big talk is get point for no stuff like that and just like because it's fucking crazy that people endure stuff like this for an adventure or fun or whatever they think it is you know and, and shit like this is similar i think because obviously not to the same extent like but yeah but you're a going different on... thing but like the idea of uh maybe not so much then but now people being like oh let's just go there because this thing happened and it's like do you realize how fucking like and like you said earlier anton like how difficult it is to get there and back like it's not like you just get to the top of the mountain and just fucking jump off and fly away yeah there's not a helicopter waiting at the top to pick you up with some hot cocoa and just be like good job everybody you did great no it's like okay well get your ass back down yeah, like, what do you spend like twenty minutes high fiving, and they're like, "Shit, we've got <laughs> to do this." Got to come back. I think you cel- like, isn't it traditional? Like, you celebrate when you're back at base camp. Like, you have Probably. a little shindig yeah. the night before yeah. at base camp, and then when you get Tons back to Volca. base camp, you're like, "Okay, the rest of this is smooth sailing. We made it." And then you all die in an avalanche. Yeah, so crazy. It is nuts because I just I don't have that gumption to be like, I want to go hike a fucking big ass mountain and. Like, I would go in BC and go in some of the mountains up there and do, like, a very long, like, in-depth hike and get really in deep in the woods. And if I had supplies and all that stuff, I could never convince Chelsea to do it. She likes glamping. She'd rather be in a huge RV, but even that she wouldn't want to do. Um, I love love mountain hiking, but I'm not about to go fucking climbing. 
No. Mm. I don't, and then I don't that, I'll hike. I'll hike all fucking day, but I am not climbing. Absolutely and those dudes not. that have like the spiky shoes and they like climb up the fucking mountain mm-hmm. with the, like this, like they got balls, man. That's like, mountaineers. That was, that. you know, it's funny. It's like out of giant testicles. Out of everything that he's done, that is the most interesting aspect of Aleister Crowley is the fact that he was a fucking yeah. mountaineer that essentially climbed K2. But yeah. he was also a giant piece of shit and was responsible for many, many deaths on those mountains. Yeah, and like drinking sh- child's blood and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I don't think I that was it. I think I he was know. just a spoiled rich <laughs> kid, but. And uh, that will be, a, I do want to do a deep dive. We have all these, like, now that we've done it with Dahmer and, you know, Antarctica, stuff like that, there were so many talks about doing, like, you know, getting back into it. Go back and listen to me and Billy argue um, on the Alex Crowley episode, but we will do a big uh, contextual conversation on him because it's fascinating, like his life. And I want to give go me into give me a detail. couple months prior and I will no, read we will. everything that I have. I got that huge book I need to read because, like you said, I want it for the Patreon. I will be reading some of Alistair Crowley's poems and that stuff I've never read before. So it should be you need to record your reaction to white stains, <laughs> but you need I'm to gonna, not read yeah. it and let me read it to you. Okay, we can do that for the Patreon okay. fairly soon. So there's all this stuff. I have this massive Crowley book. We have so many stuff coming this year, and I'm, like, just super excited about it. Um, so they essentially, like, to avoid losing the altitude they have gained, because even the visibility of the snow, it would be like you could get lost fairly easy, I'm sure, and not really know what direction you are actually going. Like, I'm sure. And then, you know, you're drinking vodka most of the time because you defeat the cold. Well, according to that... uh that, that highly accurate uh, film that we've all seen, the, the Devil's Past. They're drinking Russian moonshine, not the. Uh... Oh, that's even stronger. I like that. So I I looked up I like a movie I could watch um, based on uh, the the Datloff Pass incident, and that was the main one that everyone like like the main most popular one. I'm sure there's really low budget cheesy ones, which the ending was kind of cheesy with the CGI, but I like the idea that they went looking for you know, what happened, and then they stumble upon all this strange stuff, which we'll get when we, we'll talk about more, I feel like, on the next episode when we discuss, like, the theories and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, because I liked how they were tying other conspiracy theories into it and stuff like that, and they did show the idea of being, like, caught in the snow is, and and when the avalanche kind of hit, like, I thought that was fairly done well, because it'd be frightening. Yeah. Here's a question before I move on. This might seem like a really dumb question, but I feel like there's probably a lot of people listening that are going to ask this question. Uh, why the fuck did they do this in the first place? For fun. They they don't want to go on an adventure. You're talking the uh, the original Diet Love group? Yeah. Like because look that picture right there. Because they are all 20-something shitheads that are bored and want to go do something. Yeah. In, in 1959 Soviet Russia. Yeah, and Yuri and uh, Nikolai thought they could hear the avalanche coming from fucking <laughs> miles and miles Six away. Six months away. <laughs> so I, yeah. I think there there is probably some validity, obviously, Yeti Yeti murders notwithstanding, to calling them inexperienced. Because yes, they're they're in their early twenties, but like unless they are unless they grew up in that region and they've been doing that shit for ages. They're not going to know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Seems like such a wild thing to do for fun. It's like, let's go hike the Mountain of the Dead or whatever the fuck yeah. it's called. Well, why did what's his fuck do that whole into the wild shit? Yeah. yeah. And sure. get himself sick and die. People do it because humans, you know, sometimes you just have that urge to do something that nobody else is doing. Yeah, and to I, leave a mark in this world kind of thing. Yeah, like, exactly. I always take from, like, even doing the show that, you know, as long as the earth doesn't blow up, this will exist far after my death. And we're leaving something. I joked with my buddy. I was like, I was like, you know, I was like, whatever, if, you know, whatever comes of the show in the end, um, you know, if we grow bigger and bigger and whatever happens, right? But I was like, this will be out forever. And I was like, forever, my voice will be cemented in audio of the internet or whatever, talking about fucking aliens and how much I hate the government. So that's fun. Forever. Forever and ever and ever. Also, a lot of these uh, guys in this group, Remind me of you know that weird uh is it like that inbred Whitaker family? Whitaker. Is that what they're called? The Whitakers. Whitakers. Oh, that sounds familiar. At my front door. I think someone's at your door. Yeah, I think there is. <laughs> it's the Yeti. He's kind of, it's not actually no, it's uh it's the fucking Soviet Russian dudes that are still around. Yeah, it's the, it's the XKGB showing up <laughs> like we heard you're speaking of deal at love. What are you not talking about? Dolph. What inbred family? Uh, I'm not really sure they're called the Whitakers. 
And you're, what? Just the look of these people? Yeah, like not not necessarily in that picture there, but in some of the other like clips of them in the wild, they look like that creepy fucking family. They definitely but... look like Russian hill folk, especially Dietlov. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Igor. The, it, yeah, they, they they look like Russians. That's for sure. All very pale. <laughs> I say like Alexander people. just looks angry in Russian. Yeah, Yuri Take the does fucking too. picture, old lady. I know they all kind of look like angry. It is like you know, and I don't know what it's like in Russia. I don't. I don't actually know anyone that is Russian. Um, I don't even know if I've. I feel like I've talked to a Russian person. When I was in Cuba. Um, but like I don't know if you guys ever had a Russian friend. Um. I don't. I've, n- I've never really talked with a Russian. How is it over there? Uh, you know, what's it, what it like? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it depends who you ask. Yeah, it's true. I've met a lot of people in my life, just not really any Russians. Just, Have just you... remember, there were a lot of people that thought that Nazi Germany was a real good fucking time, and for them, it was. Yeah, uh, that's true. We call those people Nazis. Yeah, it's so true. It is crazy because it's different points of views of people that you know they. People, even like I'm, I'm sure people like there's certain people that like Soviet Russia, Soviet Russia, and then there's people that fucking absolutely hated it. Right? It depends what part of the totem pole you're on. Well, and we will never get an accurate. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck. Do you guys never hear about these? We should definitely do an episode about these people. No, um, I've yeah. never. This Inside the horrifying the... secrets of the most famous inbred family. Who speak in grunts. It's crazy because uh, I feel like I've heard about this. There's a video footage of the one guy on the porch. Oh, I think I've seen yeah. this. And the dude and... who, the a dude has done like a kind of a documentary thing and he's went back to visit them like 15, 20 years later. He was on Joe Rogan a couple of weeks ago talking about it. Really? I would love yeah. it. It's, it's funny because I was just mentioning to Billy, which I, it would be exciting to talk about, but um, somebody suggested us to do cover this case of the, there's a family in Nova Scotia and they like lived in the backwoods, like in I think like a mountain, like it's something crazy. Like they lived, like in and they inbreded for fucking like years and years. And it's like a fucked up case, and uh, and not even a case. It's like the way pe- these people lived, it was fucking crazy. And they uh, they got so far in the inbreeding that obviously they became feral like animals almost in in some regard. But uh, if you look what at the would royal think family, you would become sterile before you would go like full feral like that, but. I know. Are your Nature's jaws all fucked? Like if you if you if you and I want to do an episode on this, but if like we maybe dive into maybe a deep dive into the royal family because I think it would be fairly interesting to get into that even after especially after we cover Jimmy Savile and stuff like that is like those fucking paintings when they're like jaws all fucked up and just like you can tell that they're inbred. <laughs> the Egyptians were worse. Yeah. Oh wow. Keep so them- they, I I never heard about this, but they're they're called the the. The Goler clan, and they have an entire yes. town in Nova Scotia. Yeah, it's that's coming. That so it depends if we all four of us want to do it. But I definitely want to do that with Billy because I just want—I just love seeing Billy's reactions on certain episodes where he doesn't really know anything about it. And you know, Billy's from a Mennonite family, so who knows? Maybe he's a little bit inbred too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um. <laughs> so is not so- here. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. He's not here. Uh to avoid like losing the altitude, obviously. So they 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 had gained. Um they perhaps simply just because the team wanted to practice camping on a mountain slope before their ascend higher up. Um Dilot uh Dilot Dietlov. <laughs> Dietlov called for the camp to be made there. It was on this solitary mountainside that all nine hikers of the Dietlov Pass incident would meet their demise. Bum, when bum, fi- bum. Bam, bam, bam. I could definitely see it leading into what you said earlier, Anton, about them being like extremely um like inexperienced. Mm-hmm. Uh, like from what I gathered, they were like less than a kilometer away from uh, a forested area that they could have used for like better shelter. shelter. Yeah. And like a lot of the the stories and the theories people seem to reckon that he was like, Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to lose this like, you know, kilometer and a half we've made uphill. Yeah. So we're just gonna wing it and just let's just camp here. Yeah, because one of uh one of the I feel like there there was um I feel like there were, what was ten of them originally, ten or eleven. I think there was ten of them. And the one guy, this is the last picture when they were together got sick 
and he stayed behind. Mm -hmm. And imagine that you're like, you stay behind. You're like, you're feeling like shitty sick, but I can't, I can't keep going on with this hike. You guys go on. And then you find out, you know, whatever, how long later, what happened to your fucking friends. Imagine like, how bummed out. I'm sure he was at the time where he's just like, oh, I want to really wanted to go on this trip. And they're yeah, like, so oh, everyone's crazy. dead in horrible ways. He only like, died oh. like 10 years ago, nine years ago. Really? Well, yeah. What, would you feel relieved or would you want to be part of the the alien abduction Bigfoot? Uh, do you know what? As a surviving <laughs> member, I'd use that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, oh, yeah, I know. I know what happened to them. Yeah, I know yeah. that. I'd be like trying to do conventions and shit. <laughs> yeah. You do the press circuit and like you just I feel like you could probably get away with only talking about them as people. Just yeah. make up some yeah. stories that you knew about them. And then when someone brings up the incident, be like, I don't know. And then someone yeah. will ask you, well, what do you think happened? And then you can just make up whatever bullshit you want. Yeah. Write a book about it, you know, get yeah. tons of money from it. Yeah. Fucking looks looks like not a fun time to be out in the out in the <laughs> cold ass snow. Um yeah, so crazy because they 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 were like hitchhiking. They had like they went on the back of a truck um, to get up close to the mountain, and then they actually like uh, I think they used uh, horses and like buggies and stuff like that. And they finally went on foot, which sounds fucking scary. None of that shit sounds fun to me. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. So when February twentieth rolled around, there was still no communication from the hikers. A search party was mounted. The volunteers rescued a rescue force that trekked through the Dyatlov Pass, found the campsite, but no hikers. So army and police investigators were sent to determine what happened to the missing team. When they arrived on the mountain, the investigators weren't hopeful. Though the group was made up of experienced hikers, they call them experienced, and they call them inexperienced. Depends who you ask. Mm -hmm. And the the, the well, route... experienced hikers does not necessarily mean experienced mountaineer. Yeah, it's true. It's true. The route that they have chosen was uh, remarkably difficult, and accidents on these tricky mountain trails were a real danger. When the hikers have been missing for so long, investigators expected to find an open and shut case of a horrific accident on treacherous ground. They were only partially correct. They found the bodies, yet in a state the bodies were found only raised more questions. So when they finally found them, they were like, huh, this is fucking weird. Because the way that the bodies were like, uh, well, the way they found them is, it is strange. And yeah. like, didn't a few of them, uh, a few of them strip down because they called it, um, yeah, they said, they said that they were like, oh, I fucking just forgot the name of the all, term. There's all the, the hypothermia. Because eventually your body, you 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 freak out. And Hypothermia you're... dementia is the one yeah. thing, but then there was another one, which is like a preemptive or premature something. Look at that, dude. That I is know. a hollowed out Freaky. face. It's so fucking. Uh, for, all, for all the audio listeners, we're pulling up the images of the bodies, and it is like horrifying. Just that these, especially their state of their bodies, they were claiming that some of them seemed like they were cuddled up together. Um, <sighs> fucking hell. Uh, so crazy don't in that situation as well can't you feel like your skin is burning yeah i believe yeah you, you, you like so all that's your nerves why you... just start dying and exploding essentially so that's why you kind of like you start to freak out and you take off your clothes um weird looks like there's an orb in that picture but it's an old camera so who knows uh, exposure. But, but yeah Lord. we'll get into let's get into the bodies and stuff like that now and how they really were discovered uh but starting on february 26th the discoveries of the bodies opened up the true mystery of the atloff pass incident that continues to this day when investigators arrived at the campsite the first thing they noticed was that the tent had been cut open in a way uh, that soon proved to be from the inside and it was nearly destroyed which is crazy strange um yeah it's so weird because then it's like there is a theory which we'll get into on the second episode of that maybe their tent caught on a fire because they had like a little stove thing in there and that they had to like try to get they they had no other choice and that's why they have no shoes and socks but even when chelsea's watching it with me she was like it is why would they like leave all their shit why would you not put socks on even if you were in a panic and we'll get into it later on but when they were the other bodies were found and they were uh, the, they trailed the footsteps of them. They were walking in a calm, orderly fashion, which is fucking weird. Well, I mean, if you have somebody that is experienced in a in a trauma based situation like that, where mm -hmm. it would be more like 
okay, don't panic. Everybody just keep moving. Like you're going to try and keep order as best as possible. Yeah. Um, but it, it is, it is weird because you would think that it's not normally the thing that you would do. You would think that people would just panic like crazy and be like, ah, but what good is that going to do? So if, if you are an experienced person, you know, don't panic. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta try and hold it together as best as you can. Yeah, it is strange. Cause then, and some things are saying that they were running away in fear, but then the footsteps show that they were like kind of being calm and right. Obviously we'll get more into our theories on that shit next episode. Yeah. <laughs> and even the thing with the stove, like. Uh, I know a lot of people focus on the fact that that wasn't something that they bought. It was like a a thing that they kind of just rigged up themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And apparently there's images of them the day before. And you can see there's like barn marks on some of their coats and shit. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and they were saying like, and, yes. yeah, they were like talking about, you know, oh, maybe it caught fire and they got out. But that still doesn't explain some of the injuries. Okay. So let's say like. How was there so many coincidences there then? So the tent catches fire, yeah. they decide to get out basically half naked. Then an avalanche yeah. hits some of them, then some of them, something else happens, somebody else, but it's all calm at the same time. Well, and Dorosh- how, how Doroshenko and Kro- Krovnyashenko were the ones that fell asleep by the fire, if memory serves, because yeah. those are the two that are together and they just kind of sat and waited and- for death. Well, I think they waited for whatever. I think they were just like, well, you know. If they figure it out, they'll come back and rescue us. And if not, then, you know. You know, the shit part about that as well is it's not even like, oh, you know, if we wait till till daylight or whatever, or whatever, you know, it, you know, in other situations, you might say, well, like, well, as soon as we get daylight, things will be much better and blah, blah. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, no, we're in like the worst place we could be. Yeah. yeah. So crazy because then. uh so, <clears throat> meanwhile, most of the team's belongings, including several pairs of shoes, have been left there at their camp, which is puzzling. Then uh, then they discovered eight or nine sets of fo- fo- uh, footprints from the team, many of them clearly made by people. What, are they, what do they mean by that? Uh, with either nothing, socks, or single shoe on their foot feet, which is weird. So they have one shoe on, some of them. Uh, these tracks led to the edge of the nearby woods almost a mile away from the camp. Yeah, which makes me wonder what was in those woods. But yeah. again, that's uh, that's for the but next it, Yeah, and well, because it could have been something logical like a wolf or, or a bear. Or a bear or a like moose, even because you know, yeah. moose will fuck you up. So, oh, yeah, they will fucking literally like they will crush you with their feet yeah. because they have to like they stomp out wolves and stuff like that. And they will literally just like destroy you. And you're not like people are like, oh, like they're huge animals. You're not supposed to fuck around with a moose. Like, no, they're not taller even than most close people to are them. when they're like full bull mooses. My mom lives up north and she's seeing them from far away, but like close enough where you're like, oh, shit. Like, eh, get away from me. Yeah. Yeah. So at the forest edge, under a large cedar, the investigators found the remains of a small fire in the first two bodies. Yuri Krivinsko, 23, and Yuri Doroshinki, 21, despite temperatures of negative 13 to negative 22 Fahrenheit on the night of their deaths. Both men's bodies were found shoeless and wearing only underwear. They've yeah, then found the next three bodies, those of Dietlov, Zinyada Kolomogrova, and Rustim Slobodin, who died on their way back to the camp from the cedar tree. Good job with the pronunciation. I would have butchered all of those words. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> so crazy. Um, yeah, you t- so when while the circumstances were odd, um, investigators... Uh, found that the deaths were uh, were clear. Uh, all the hikers, they said, they perished from hypothermia. Their bodies showed no indication of severe or external damage beyond what was inflicted by the cold, which is not necessarily true. Um, right. It However, just se- it seems like they're trying to cover up some shit. That, is that a wa- is that a creek? Are they in flowing water? Because that's what that yeah. looks like. Yeah. And which would erode your body even more so quickly. Like, like the chunks of ice hitting your face and, and yeah. yeah. It looks like a horrible way to die. And especially in their like petrified states where some of them were like when they actually brought the them hands with the claws up like yeah, that. Like that's... for like the autopsy. Like it is like kind of crazy that. Uh, so like that shit looks frightening. And that's that f- it looks like a state of fear on their face. 
Um, I think like, that one. Like, yeah, look at this shit. This guy looked yeah. like. Oh my god, it's so crazy. You're frozen in place. Your face is swollen. Like. Oh my god, so scary looking. And then the we'll get into the chick that had her eyes oh. cut out, like taken out and stuff like that. We're showing some of the horrible images uh, after they actually got the bodies in to be able to autopsy. Those are um, fucking them. brutal. Yeah, so crazy. I think this might be Yuri and the other guy because they were fairly close together mm -hmm. when they were found, um, which is so crazy. So yeah. The bodies show no indication of the supposedly beyond the cold, which is I don't know, this is so stupid. However, right. this however, didn't explain why, yeah, you, uh, how, however, this didn't explain why Yuri Dorenchko was brown purple in complexion or why he had gray foam coming from his right cheek and gray liquid coming from his mouth. Furthermore, so this weird. didn't explain why the hands of the two hikers under the cedar were scraped away and the branches above them were torn down, as if the two men had tried desperately to seek shelter from something or someone in the tree. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. You want me to do this next one, too? Yeah, let's get into it. All right. Meanwhile, Rostim Slobodin had head injuries consistent with somebody falling and hitting their head over and over again. And that Zinyavik shit is fucking weird. Well, like, think about it. If he, if he tried climbing a tree... And then, you know, your your hands just stop working because they're too cold and your body shuts down. Yeah. It yeah, because, possible. yeah, because, like, in, I, I don't know, I feel like it, it, just his head, though, like, it was, it was, I feel like it was mostly just his head that was, like, severely damaged and injured and, um, how would they say, it was, like, an impact of, like, a uh, car crash. And then it's just, like, so, even if he did try to climb a tree, looking out, see if he can see anything, um to try to figure out where they are or mm -hmm. if there's anything close or their camp or maybe they lost where their camp was but the head injury thing is strange to me well i mean we'll get into it more on the next episode with yeah. the theories and stuff but like it could very well could have been because an avalanche will move with that velocity mm -hmm. it's the same thing as like you know a hurricane or a sandstorm it's like it's not necessarily that it is blowing it's what it is blowing and okay. in Avalanche 2, yeah. you have rocks that are coming down because you're maybe on he slope, fell so. like in you know, did like a <laughs> it could have thrown him car and just cartoon had his... cartwheel like where you're just yeah. like you fucking smash your head and then you bounce off and then you land back on your head and then it's like you're like cartwheeling down the fucking side of the mountain which would just be frightening. Just it's like, like ah, contrary ah. to what cartoons would have us believe, you don't turn into a snowball automatically. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That would be even crazier. One yeah. one hiker was found in a giant snowball. <laughs> we. <laughs> so fun. Uh, there was a the cartoon cat strange. and a cartoon mouse fighting it uh, yeah. to get out. The the thing I find strange about this is like the the variation of injuries. Um, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like if you if you just read the story at like and take it at face value, it is kind of hard to explain how like one thing or the other inflicted all these injuries. So it's like, oh yeah, well this guy had uh, damage to his clothes that were burnt because the stove caught fire and the tent went on fire. Right. And then yeah. after that, the, there happened to be an avalanche. And then anyone who survived that happened to smash their heads open over and over again off a tree. And someone else happened to do something like I'm not saying that it's not possible. Obviously, I don't have a clue. But it yeah. does. Like if you just read the story, like the, the basic At face story. Value. Yeah, you're kind of going, huh, that doesn't really sound like it makes any sense that all those things had to happen in succession. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, but it also uh, kind of to me does where it's like yeah. you've you've almost invoked the chaos of nature and now you are susceptible to everything. And then I feel like once one of you falls, it's like, OK, well, we got this. And then if two more of you fall, then you're kind of like, oh, God, are we going to make it's it out of this at all? And then like a straight line almost. Yeah. Of like where they died. We're looking at an image of like essentially how far apart the bodies were as they go down the kind of side of this like mountainside. And then the four that were found in the fucking Creek is so like, so crazy. Like, and the, I, the ones uh, in the Creek were found last. Yeah. Cause after like two, two months or something like that, uh, they've so nuts, man. So that, mm -hmm. that cedar tree there, um, was that surrounded by snow at the time? Cause like they say that it had broken branches up to five meters in height. Yeah, uh, yeah, like someone was isn't that like well, it. three meters is like 13 feet, so that's like 20 you think something. Maybe foot. they were just trying to get a better view, like they that's why they were going to climb the tree. Is they're just like, all right, we don't know where we are, we're kind of lost. Let's, yeah, that's what I would think, get a better vantage point without trying to hike up the mountain to get a better vantage point because it was probably too treacherous. It, this sounds really ridiculous because I, I, I have no idea or no basis for this, but if let's say that they had an idea there was some sort of an avalanche or something coming. 
would in any world would it make any sense to climb up a tree? No, no. I wouldn't think so. And like, like to avoid, like what I'm saying is, if they thought avoid, there was an avalanche, yeah, but it yeah. was not crazy, would yeah. it would it make sense in the moment to be like, hey, let's climb up? I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe you're gonna not be caught in the majority of the avalanche itself. Yeah. I don't know, cause it, it uh, you would be like, and then you're in a state of shock and fear, and you're just mm-hmm. oh, so fucking so crazy. Um, so it, it wasn't we got it wasn't until uh, the other four bodies were found two months later that the mystery deepened even more. The remaining hikers were discovered buried under the snow in a ravine seventy five meters deeper in the woods than the cedar. Known as the Dyatlov uh, Pass Den, the bodies um, told even more gruesome stories than those of the other members of the group. So nuts, man. Yeah. So uh, Nikolai Sibyol Brignolis uh, suffered significant skull damage in the moments before his death, while Ludmila Gibunya and Sirmen Zawatyov had major chest fractures that could have only been caused by an immense force comparable to that of a car crash. Yeah, that is crazy. Like that's a that's an impactful force. And even looking at the images of them be you know before this tragedy, it just seems like they were extremely like happy. This is fun. We're, but it like it looks like they aren't even that properly dressed. Like they seem like they, their coats do not seem like they would hold up in a storm. I'm sure all of the ex. I think. I think you're. You know. You're. You're dressing for the season. So like, they're. They yeah. look prepared there. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. But you got to remember too. Like layering is the biggest thing with that. Like hundred percent. You, you have your thick outer layers that stay waterproof and make sure that you don't get soaked. And then everything else under is meant to keep your body temperature in. And I. And I'm sure them like going to do this. They were like, you know, this will be kind of crazy. We just have to be careful. Da da da. And then. They, I'm sure, have knew like they wouldn't have no idea that this could. They obviously knew that there was risks, but I don't think they would ever imagine that they would. People's eyes would be gouged out or tongues cut off, which is the biggest weird. That that's the strangest thing to me. Like if so, if say someone fell and they maybe bit their tongue off, mm-hmm. they would be able to essentially prove that that's how it happened. Um, I feel like they would be able to tell if there was like teeth marks in the tongue. And then if they don't know where that is either in the eyes, like I wonder, you know, well, I think there's a so difference different between theories. There's a difference between biting your tongue, which there's only so far back in your tongue that you can yeah. bite and having your tongue completely ripped out. And then um, it's like, or the day we'll get into a theories, which I'm, I can't wait for that episode to like really dive into like what may have happened and stuff like that. Um, and well, the main thing is that so like with Dubinia, she's missing her tongue, her eyes and part of her yeah. lips as well as facial tissue. Now, that means to, to me, logically, one would think that a scavenger got got her because that mm. is the soft tissue and that is what animals eat first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you die, your cat will start eating your fucking nose. And All of the softest and... parts of you, it will eat first it, because it doesn't mention food. anything about like the rest of her face like had it been torn apart or facial was it tissue like... was missing as well yeah so i think she's the one that used yeah. to see the teeth like um in that picture that tom had mm-hmm. and a fragment of her uh skull and shit too mm-hmm. like so crazy here let me yeah this it looks horrifying because this was obviously some one of the like couple of the last bodies found and it looks extremely cr- like it's just crazy how her eyes are missing and her tongue like it just doesn't make sense to me of what would have happened to them. Like, yeah. Well, also if you look at the chest, her. if that if that is her, um it is her, yeah. Okay, so all of those markings on the chest, I believe, are the indicators of radiation burns. Mm-hmm. Just Which from is, pictures I've seen of radiation burns, that's that looks very it's like did they discover something and then you know the russians cut out her fucking tongue and eyes like there's obviously all these different theories but it's like it's 1959 do we not i'm sure we would never know but is it possible that this was a test site for like like close by was a test site for nuclear weapons that like yes could have caused an avalanche and then a little bit of fallout hit them and they're like well we have to cover this up because we can't let them know where one of our test sites are because yeah. you know the U.S. will send spy planes over to monitor us. Yeah, it is. It, it is crazy and so uh, so nuts. Um, yeah, and then they found the the body of Alexander 
call of that stuff. <laughs> call it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call it tough. Uh, but the same, but in the same location, but without the same kind of severe wounds, which is also strange that like, she was like destroyed. It seemed like, like eyes missing. I, th I think she had like, uh, there was a burn mark, stuff like that. And, uh, this second group of bodies suggested the hikers had died, um, at distinctly different times because they had appeared making use of, uh, the clothes of the other people who died before them which I would love to know what happened, how like they obviously other people died first and then they were trying to use their clothing. And that's the idea that your clothing gets wet. You're like fucked. If you're, if you're out in the cold and somehow your clothing gets wet by any means, you could freeze to death by that alone. Oh, very quickly. Yes. So well, that's why the waterproof is the most important element of snow gear. Yeah, it's very true. I want to take it's, it away. It's, it's also weird as well. How they, um, there's uh, several things I've read that say that they were the only people like anywhere near. Yeah. Because yeah, some of the theories involve, we'll get into it like in the in the second part, but other uh, parties, let's say. But then there's other accounts that say that there was groups of hikers about 50 kilometers south of where all this happened that had seen shit in the sky. So it's like, was there yeah. people there? Was there not people around? Yeah, I know. There's contradicting stuff, and if they were trying to like hush them, you know, but like, you didn't see anything, you know, or we'll find your family and murder them because we all like, and I, you know, um, I got nothing against anybody, but the Russian government is pretty brutal, um, in the way they do things and try to cover up things and have in the secrecy be behind the Soviet Union. The and American KGB government does know and, better. No, I agree. We I agree. just don't know as much of what the American government does. They're just better versus, at hiding it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's my whole thing. I've had so much beef with, like, people are like, oh, Russia's doing this or that. But it's like the American military posts up on every corner of the fucking world and acts like they can um, have jurisdiction over everything and everybody. No, and not countries. over everything and everybody, Tom. Like Only that. things that have resources that we yes. want. Yeah, and it seems like even... You know, we like I'm sure one day we'll talk about like Afghanistan and stuff like that and like what happens over there. I'm sure. You know, my, but you, you know, you know what the American media loves calling out war crimes. They yeah. love calling out war crimes of other nations leaders. You know what they don't call out is the fucking laundry list of war crimes that the U.S. has against it. Yeah. And it's crazy that there's like, oh, we're going to like w when they went to Afghanistan or Iran or anywhere like in um, some third world countries and Middle Eastern stuff. They weren't doing anything to protect anybody. They were protecting resources and in oil and whatever else they were looking for. No, it was um, it's never about the people. It's always about no. resources. And then they just leave it. And the Taliban's like, we're worried about Andrew Tate. <laughs> just joking. But I, heard, I read that. And I was like, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> so nuts. Jesus Christ. What a fucking God. world we live in, man. Um, so Dubinia's foot was wrapped in a piece of Kravinskyo's wool pants. Yeah, weird. Zolotarov was found in Dubinia's full fur coat and hat, suggesting he had taken them from her after she mm. had died, just as she had taken clothes from Kravinskyo earlier. Yeah, uh, weird. So perhaps crazy. the most mysterious of all was the clothes of both Kielatov and Dubinia showed evidence of being radioactive. Due to evidence like this, even with more bodies found, the mystery of the Dyatlov in past incident only grew more baffling. Yeah, it's so weird because, like, they're saying that all oh, the two guys maybe worked um, in some sort of nuclear plant type of thing and that it could have gone on their clothing. But then that I don't know if that necessarily makes sense. It wouldn't be only a couple of them. <sighs> they would all have signs of radiation, especially with mm -hmm. the, the nuclear blast theory, too, that I had, I had thrown out earlier is all of them would have signs of radiation. Yeah, it's just like uh, their, their bodies are horrifying, especially the ones with like the their eyes are just gone. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, it, it, what animals exist out in the Russian mountains, right? Even that Plenty. alone. There's, that's the thing is that it's nature. There are always things that will evolve to adapt and survive in those conditions. Yeah. And you know what? I'm willing to bet that most of those things aren't very picky about what they eat. I was just sure. going to say that. I would imagine that anything that is living in a place like that, if they come across bodies or people, it's like, hey, yummy. <laughs> Food. <laughs> No, a hundred percent because they're preserved and stuff like that. And like they're according to, uh, oh, I was like going to get to a very crazy reptilian. Well, theory. you know, they're, they're frozen. So if you think about it more often than not harmful bacteria, isn't going to grow. No, supposedly after uh world war, um, two, 
the the reptilians had the biggest feast they've ever had because they had food like just dead soldiers all in the snow and they were just picking them up and take like you know they Not reptilians fucking, feasted on negative feelings they do but they also have suppose there's all these different fucking theories and we'll get into it another time another episode but they suppose we do feed off humans how we eat cattle and stuff like that they also can do the same thing in their physical form but if that um, was true why would we still be burying people because Wouldn't they have set up a system that's like, oh, yeah, we're burying people, and then they don't? They got them in, they're in, the, in the underground, right? They're like they're fucking crawling through Oh, caves. when they come along from the other side and open up. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, formaldehyde yeah. just a seasoning then at this point? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. They just fucking give we me that like delicious. With hot sauce. <laughs> so crazy. Um, So it is baffling. And this, the Soviet government closed the case quickly and gave only vague causes of the death and speculated that the hikers own incompetence may have caused their demise or the natural disaster was the culprit, like, or some sort of natural disaster was the culprit, but it's just like, uh, their own incompetence to an extent, you could say that, but it's just like, if it was something that was natural, like they keep trying to claim it Mm -hmm. would have, it would have been uh, unavoidable. Yeah. Really? You know? It's just again, like, uh, and I know the last the last while I've been trying to play like fucking devil's advocate with this stuff and being like, no, here's the here's what happened. It was an avalanche, and that's it. But the more I actually listen to this, like, it, it is one of those cases I think where, look, I know some of the the theories are like really out there, yeah. But like, there there is a lot of things that like each theory calls like a lot of specific things into question. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah, but if okay, so if it's if the theory is a hurricane, I know that's one of the theories that they came up with like two or three years ago. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, a hurricane could have caused this. And then, like, if you start to look at the details, like, yeah, but that doesn't explain this and, and what happened with that and how did this happen and how did they have traces of radiation and how what happened with the tent that's, and what was yeah, the, yeah, mean, the radiation is like the most sense. baffling part. Like, yeah. like, where did that come from? And it very well could have been that, you know, there's uranium in the mountain or something or anything along those lines. But it's just, I don't know, it, that that seems yeah. a little, th- that definitely seems to be the, the most confusing aspect of it to me. And it'll be interesting to get into, like, because when we talk about the theories, it will also dive in this other realm of of theories based on everything. Because there's, there's th- we'll get into it, but theory about aliens, about uh, a murderer, about mm-hmm. fucking a Yeti, all this stuff. Because we don't really I think know the anything. murderer is the least plausible out of everything. I would say aliens and a Yeti are f- yeah. are both far more plausible theories. Or than the a, just a government single murderer. coming after them because they saw something early on. Indigenous, ma- tree, wasn't there? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so that's that's the next part that. that we have. Um, yeah, because uh, early on, many Soviets uh, also suspected that the hikers' deaths were the result of an ambush by the local Mensi tri- uh, tribesmen, which would be crazy if that did happen because they were used to maybe um, adapting and living in those type of climates, right? Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. I, I always okay. wonder, like, these indigenous people, like, you know, the Inuits we have, you know, up, up fucking above us and stuff like that, and like the Northwest Territories and stuff like that. It's just like the fact that they've existed for so long in those climates baffles my mind. Because how they, have, they like, know what they're doing. It's crazy. Like, living they in igloos and shit all the time. How, like, they, yeah, they understand how to so live crazy. in harmony with the planet. They yeah. don't need, you know, the crazy bullshit of, of the rest of society. Yeah. I wonder at any point did the group. I know this all seemed like it, it sounds like this all happened quite fast and obviously mm-hmm. they didn't really have much time to think about what the fuck they were doing. But I wonder at any point, like, were any of them like, this was a fucking terrible idea. Yeah, I bet you they, they had to have. Yeah. And like, it will get into it too. Like some of them were drunk, like, or if not all of them, but they definitely. Say, what some you mean, some, I'm willing to bet yeah. most, if not all of them were drunk. Be- because uh, the, the chick that was missing her tongue, um, there was like, there was, they found blood in her stomach. Which is crazy, like which is also strange too. But that means that uh, to me, that means that she was alive when she lost her tongue. Yeah, so crazy. A sudden uh, attack would uh, account for what maybe the way the hikers fled their tents, uh, the disarray and the damage done to the second group of bodies. But the explanation fizzled quickly because the Mensi people were largely peaceful, and the evidence of the Dilatov Pass didn't. Um, the Atlov Pass didn't have much support of like a violent human conflict. Right. No, it really doesn't. So weird. For one, the damage done to the hiker's body exceeded the blunt force trauma one human could inflict on another, which they proved that like that this wasn't a human being couldn't wasn't able to do this. Um, 
And there is also no evidence of any footprints on the mountain below made uh, like other than the hikers themselves that made these footprints. But there's supposedly uh, people that sh the, uh, even the, the doc I was watching is like monsters of some shit. It's like mon monsters of the world. And, and it's just like one of those ones that maybe think that it's uh, and I got I got to finish it before we get into the theories um, next week. But I would assume if you were a tribes person who lived in a snowy region, you would understand the importance of covering your tracks and you yeah. could probably, you were probably very good at it. So, I mean, yeah. I don't believe that it was them at all, but I'm yeah. saying, I, I think the whole absence of track of tracks doesn't really prove anything that it, well, they're does. saying that, and we'll get like, it, that's what we're like, we're going to bring it all into the theories next time, but there is a lot of strange uh, stuff and coincidences and all that shit. So uh, investigators then uh, conceived a swift, uh, uh, con uh, Conceived of a swift and violent avalanche, uh, the sound of snow collapsing, an early warning. Uh, supposedly, like they thought maybe they were frightened out of their tents in a state of undress, and it sent them kind of sprinting for the tree line to protect themselves, you would think, from the avalanche. An avalanche would also have been powerful enough to inflict injuries that killed the second group of hikers. Mm -hmm. But the physical evidence of an avalanche just wasn't there, and locals um, familiar with the, ter uh, the terrain later said that such a natural disaster simply would have made sense, uh, wouldn't have made sense at Dyatlov Pass. Like it did, they're like, it, we've been here so many times. They're saying it wouldn't make sense for uh, so, some sort of natural disaster to happen at this location, I guess. Well, I mean, there, of course, they do have, you know, areas that are more susceptible to avalanche versus areas that it, it's less common. But you would yeah. think if it's a mountain and there's snow. Yeah, I know. I know all you need. Could happen. Furthermore, would the experienced hikers have made a camp in a spot that was vulnerable to an avalanche? There is also the fact that when investigators found the body, they know that no evidence that an avalanche had occurred any time recently in the region. There was no damage to the tree line and searchers observed no debris. What would come from an avalanche? Cause you would have essentially trees and forestry and whatever, right. That would like come down with the avalanche. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, trees, rocks, any number, anything that's in the way is getting pulled down. I would not want to be caught in one of those fucking things. No. Even you see those people are like, maybe, you know, they're like snowboarding or skiing and even like a small avalanche hit. It looks fucking frightening. Yeah. And the, the fact that people do that too. Like I've seen those video footage of those dudes like skiing down like a huge mountainside, like jumping off the side, like the cliffs and like it's Oh, the crazy. people that get helicoptered up to the top and then jump <sighs> out and snowboard down. Man. So nuts, man. I yeah. give them props. Cause that's frightening. So nuts. Can, so can I can I can I uh make a suggestion? Maybe drugs like the rest of us. Yeah. You know? Just you know, I can sit in my house and I can uh, go to the moon in my mind <laughs> <laughs> with mushrooms. So moreover, no avalanches have been recorded at that Tom, site. Come before. out of the bouncy house. You've been in there for an hour and a half now. No, I'm on the moon. That would be so that would be fucking fun, actually. You'd um, vomit. We we were at, I was at like a work party thing, um, like an old place I worked at. They invited me to come down, and me and my buddy Mitch that have been on this podcast once or twice, uh, we went in the bouncy house and we we're like pushing each other around, bouncing. And after like five minutes, we were fucking tired. Like oh, yeah. he's like, "Whoa, this shit takes so much out of you." Like it's like bouncing around because your weight is trying to distribute, and like we're two big guys in this thing. And he, I mean, he was getting like stuck in the corner, almost like fucking destroyed the bouncy house. And I was like, it, it, I was like, even Chelsea. Was laughing because I was like, oh, she's like, you okay? And I was like, it takes a lot out of you bouncing in a bouncy house. <laughs> it's a child's toy. Oh man. So uh yeah, they, there was no recorded evidence of an avalanche before, nor even there has never there hasn't been one after either. And the avalanche, um uh, the hypothesis uh, was character um, <laughs> was a characteristic of most of the theories put forward in the early days of the mystery. So most of you were like, yeah, this like they're in a snowy mountain location. It's an avalanche and it offered a quick and superficially plausible solution to some of the aspects of the puzzle that uh, that utterly failed to for the other accounts. So they don't they just kind of assumed that it maybe was an avalanche. Mm hmm. So um, with other, uh, other official theories leaving lots of unexplained and many alternative explanations for the Dyatlov Pass incident have been put forward in the six decades since, while many of these highly elaborate, some of them maybe 
decidedly concrete or straightforward because that's why a lot of people were just like yeah this happened because of this because oh their tent caught on fire because like and they they really try to explain it away mm -hmm. um and uh they can't it uh, every theory that i've seen and we'll get into on the next episode there's always plot points missing from how it could have happened mm -hmm. you know what i mean so, i think the paradoxical yeah. undressing is uh it's a good theory um i think yeah. I, I do think a lot of it is just like you could explain it in a uh a hypothermia and just irrational setting where it's like you just yeah all all logic and ration goes out the window and you're doing whatever you think you need to do in the moment to survive. And there is no forethought. And in that yeah. moment, I think planning is your best bet. I agree. But some that's, tried, for the, uh, that's for the next episode. Yeah. Some try to explain the hiker strange behavior and lack of clo clothing with an in-depth look at the effects of hypothermia, um, irrational thinking and behavior in common of early signs of hypothermia. It sounds like you would like slowly go crazy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And your body is like shutting down slowly and your organs start shutting down. And uh, as the victims approach death, they may have paradoxically perceived themselves to be overheating, causing them to remove their clothing which could be the case. In, yeah, that's, that's in paradoxical undressing. That's what it's called. Imagine a fucking... And if most of them had no shoes and some of them had no socks, imagine walking through the, the freezing cold in snow with no shoes on. Yeah. Like, and a lot of, like, heat releases from your feet and the top of your head and stuff like that. And so you would, like, I feel like it would go th right through your body. Mm-hmm. And you would be freezing. The trauma to the second group of bodies in this version of events is caused by stumbling, plum, uh, like a plunge over the edge of the ravine. So maybe as they were like running or um, falling and stuff like that, or they kind of just got fucking forced into the ravine. Mm -hmm. Yet hypothermia doesn't explain why the hikers left their tents um, in a panic to, you know, go out into the frigid cold in the first place. Uh, saving my theory for the next episode. Yeah. With humans effectively ruled out as the culprits behind the Dyatlov Pass incident, though there are theories that the KGB or murderous prisoners, escapees were at fault, some began to... Pa to Pause it. Pa what? Pause it? Non-human assailants. Some began to claim that the hikers were killed by the Menk. Menk? Menk. Uh, a kind of Russian Yeti uh, to account um, for the immense force and power uh, for that, which it would be necessary to cause the injuries of the three hikers. And we'll be back next week to fill your ear holes with some strange theories regarding this case, because it's kind of crazy. And like, this is why I'm excited for this year because we have a lot of, I uh, ideas of getting into some deep dive conversations doing some live shows which i want to mark down the book sometime soon um but i really and this was aaron's suggestion too is like do a a big long format deep dive into all things bigfoot from like yeti to the canadian bigfoot like there's there's so many different ones it would be interesting to do a long format conversation because we've talked about you know this Bigfoot and other type of creatures in the past on the show, but to do a big ass conversation and get, because, and then maybe lead up to, there is um, a case I want to get into about a man that was like kidnapped by a Bigfoot. Just mm. so fucking crazy. <laughs> so I, I didn't realize how many like different variations of Bigfoot there is. Um, so many. We have one uh, up in, uh, up in Canada and he's called uh, old yellow top. Because he's like Bigfoot, but he has like eighties fucking like fucking perm haircut. Nice. <laughs> he likes listening to jazz music. He he really likes Def Leppard. Yeah, I I want to do this in two parts because it is such a big uh, topic, and I mean you know it would have been three hours so to speak or something like that if we did it all in one. But I think it's interesting to kind of really just talk about what happened, and then maybe uh, and then we'll get into all the crazy theories. We should. Uh... One of us should play this while all of us are on stream. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'll you get guys it. have ever. Is it on? Um, scroll down a little more. Steam. Oh, this is what is oh, this? I don't see it on Steam. It's on Xbox One. I can probably find it on Game Pass. The Game Count Steam Store. This looks. I will get this. Um, you trace the steps of the nine Russian college students who aren't missing. Blah blah blah. Uh, it's based on the true events. You basically have to like solve the mystery. 
Wow, I want to play this. This is definitely coming for uh for I'm a looking Patreon it up on thing right now. Um, that's fucking cool. That sounds it's, fun. It's X K H O L A T K H O L A T. I had oh, it's only this twenty bucks right here. Back. I might want to get that. Dope. So and how like we'll we'll talk about how we do it for a Patreon episode, but. Even if um, each of us, uh, I know you don't have a gaming computer, Aaron, um, but even if me and even Anton played it and had you just watch or something like that and mm-hmm. then splice up to, um, like, an- if I play at the beginning, Anton, but like, whatever. We we yeah. got to figure out a way to do some of this stuff because on the Patreon, we do have um, strange streams. Or you, and I want to get Aaron involved with that too, but me and Anton have played scary games like Lunch Lady, um, Dead by Daylight. Uh, there's there's tons of stuff up there. I played that frightening uh, game. Um, that guy chased me around a hotel, which is fucking that <laughs> game is so fast. That's the one where I smashed my face into the yeah, microphone. It is. This is narrated <laughs> by Sean Bean. Sean Bean? Oh. Do you know who's Sean Bean? Beans. <laughs> Are you actually asking that question? I don't know who Sean Bean is. I okay, don't well, know. Well, that's wow. your homework afterwards. That's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not explaining to you who Sean Bean is. Oh, my God. Man, why Why should I know who Just Sean Bean is? Just look it up. Because you Sean, should know who Sean Bean everybody. is. He dies in every fucking movie he's ever been in. He's everybody. Oh, this guy? He's from Lord of the Rings. It's all yes, no yes. Problem. That's why That's why I was like, what do you mean you don't know who Sean Bean is? You're watching Lord of the Rings right now. I'm watching The Hobbit. I have not stumbled upon Lord of the Rings yet, but yeah. Um, I Just prepare for next time because we're going to get into all the crazy theories. Um, there's so many out there. I'm going to watch a bunch of stuff to make sure I'm on point with everything and to see how in-depth some of these crazy conspiracies go because anytime there's some sort of mystery or and stuff like that, there's always theories and conspiracies based on like, because when you can't explain something, you're always going to have that like conspiracy mind thought in a lot of people of like, yes. Was it the government? Was it aliens? Was it a Bigfoot? And um, especially towards the summer, we can start getting into stuff like uh, strange disappearances because there's so many crazy cases of people that just disappear. Nobody knows where they go. Like that, I want to eventually talk about that one family that they like they like pack their car in like this like hypnosis state of mind. Yeah. yeah. Or, and then and then they they're found like in I think a campsite like killed murdered or something. It's there's so many things like that. Um, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are. So remember, stay tuned for next time uh, because that will be all the crazy theories and everything. Um, you know where to find us, www.strangerpodcast.com. Um, the Patreon is the best way to support us, obviously, in, in the merch site, which um, we have new merch coming. There's 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 a bunch of stuff uh, coming this year, um, but that's, you know, I make the merch site as cheap as possible. So you can buy a T-shirt and rep uh, Strange Brew Podcast and Eventually, we'll link up some of Aaron's designs on like each of our sites, kind of thing. We'll kind of mix match them, but uh, yeah, best way to support is Patreon, and we appreciate everyone that's um, subscribed to the Patreon. We had a couple new people come on, so you know, thank you guys for supporting the show. We really do appreciate it. And there's a lot of stuff coming for the Patreon. Um, I have lots of talks. Me and Billy, I'm actually going to Billy's next week um, to actually hang out for once, but I'm still going to bring a microphone and me and Billy are going to finally record a stranger danger rant episode. We talked about this for like three years. So we're just going to get drunk and we're going to rant about everything and anything. It's going to be a fun time. Nice. Where do we find you guys? And obviously you can find us stranger podcast. Instagram is the best. It's where I am the most, or we are the most active is on Instagram. Uh, Twitch.tv invader tag it. Fuck yeah. And uh, HP Shovecraft, of course. And for me, it's uh, www.classhorrorcast.com, which actually, um, if anybody does check that out over the next few weeks, if you notice anything weird on it, make sure to reach out to me on Instagram or through email because I was getting uh, bombarded by hackers the other night. Oh, what? Shit. Really? Yeah. How that happened? Reason. What do you mean? I had no idea. They were trying to. Uh, the website was getting 17 logins per second. Holy fuck. Weird. Yeah. So that's they, interesting. What, is, what does someone want to come after you for? I, I was literally, I, I was, I was uh, visit my dad and he was like, why the fuck would someone want your shitty website? <laughs> like, that's a fair point. I was like, I, I, I would imagine they're just probably attacking like loads of small websites all at the one time. 
Yeah, that's crazy. I should check mine. And it, it also, is kind of, of course, for me, uh, House of Trash. Go out there and listen to it. We got yeah. some great episodes we've done with Aaron. Got some ones we've done with Tom, and uh, a new episode with Tron coming out soon. Yeah, the guy uh, is developing and developed uh, our design that is up now and the new design that's coming for the overall logo uh, for Strange Brew. So there's a lot of changes coming, uh, but, you know, and though you'll hear Billy more a little more often, I'm trying to get him to really uh, to get a laptop and participate in some of the Patreon stuff. So we're, we are trying um, and um, Billy is very devoted and wants to uh, try to jump on up shows with all of us like that's going to come this year. Uh, and I've said to Aaron and Anton that to do something really fun that ha- we can have a lot of banter with and all four of us do like a big special for all the fans of all of us together because I'm sure it'll be a fun time. You oh, see, yeah. I get Aaron to stay up till 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. or something like that. And I'm not allowed <laughs> to have any spirits. You're yeah. not allowed to have that many spirits. Yeah, <laughs> because there's the, and I really want to do a live show where we can actually drink and, and shoot the shit and talk, and there's where there's plans to do that stuff, so that's why you subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, we're on Odyssey now. We're on Rumble, and we're on uh, I BitChute. I, like, everything is mostly on Rumble, Odyssey. BitChute has more of the main episodes and the main ones that were for video, and more are coming because just in case, because supposedly, according to Cam from um, Wolf and Bull, that uh, YouTube is demonetizing certain people, and if you like swear within the first eight seconds, they might. Uh, that's been a thing for a while. Um, uh, Tony from Hack the Movies has been talking about that. You can't swear in the first like two minutes. Which is and then crazy. and then you reach a point and it's like it, it, it's it's a game you got to play the game if you want to fucking use the it's platform. It's it's words, man. It's just like and it's going to become worse. I, I think, agree. With censorship I agree wholeheartedly. Like that, but... but you know what? That's the way that the platform works. And if you want to fuck with it, you got to play the game. There's so. a lot of stuff coming for all of our shows, and I'm excited for this year. Honestly, I know a lot of the world is doom and gloom right now and stuff like that. But I want to genuinely enjoy doing the show. And if we enjoy doing it Hell and we're yeah. having a good time, then everyone else that's listening should be having a good time too absolutely and if you're not then like tom said multiple shut times the before, fuck just up <laughs> just shut the fuck up yeah you can come to canada and sign don't up do mates. that <laughs> um everybody love everybody you know like live try to live the best existence that you can in this reality because you know what stay fucking strange stay strange fuckers and keep watching the skies because you never know when a yeti bigfoot avalanche is going to come down and take out your entire hiking party <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs>